and thus puts an end to another incredibly busy week. I'm Mike with the Writer's Sanctuary, and it's time for the weekly vlog. Now, I really wanted to get some videos out this week, but time was not permitting. In fact, I got yesterday's out um, bit towards the end of the night. But I was all bound and determined to finish it, so I ate my dinner, went back to editing, and uploaded it. I think it was up at like 7.30, 8 o'clock, my time. So I have quite a few comments saved up that I'm going to go ahead and go through. Now before we get started, if you enjoy the video, hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, always hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can always hit me up on social media, on Twitter and Facebook, or use the contact form on RiderSanctuary.com. I usually try to get to these as soon as I can, but this week has been pretty busy for me, so um, a lot of the responses have been a little bit late, but I will try to get to them as quickly as possible. So my first comment today comes from Felicia M. After working on Textbooker for a while, I'm ready to make a website for my freelancing writing services. I'm also in the process of starting my blog, but I'm trying to build up a few articles before making it public. I just want to say thank you. I'm not sure if I would be at this point without all your amazing info and tips. So thank you. Well, thank you very much. And you are welcome. And I'll still be consistently turning into you and recommending you anytime someone, anyone asks me for advice. I wish you all the best. Well, thank you, Felicia, and I hope everything works out for you. And if you ever need any help, setting up your blog i'm doing a series of videos on that and i'm also doing a lot more content on ridesanctuary.com about blogging so hopefully i'll be able to continue to help you the next comment comes from my friend jimon michael how do you think should i write first to my potential private client and text broker and drop a hint that i'm a high level specialist in that niche that his order in the open pool has so normally what i'll do is i'll finish the order that's in the open pool and then i will send them a follow-up message afterwards and then I'll explain how I am an expert in their field. And if they need any further assistance, they can always send me jobs directly. I never try to drop the hint right off the bat. That's mostly because I want my work to support what I'm trying to tell them. And that way they already see the work that I can produce. And if the content supports what you're trying to tell them that you're an expert of, there's a much better chance of them sending you work directly. My next comment today comes from JSMXLL. I'm just going to call you Maxwell. I think half of my attention ends up on the background wondering if there's anything back there no one should notice. This is in response to one of my comments that I made about my office being a wreck and that sometimes I don't even notice what's behind me. But no, I can assure you that there's nothing back there that you're going to notice that shouldn't be. Well, that is, unless my daughter left it behind. Sometimes she'll leave little things up in the background. Like one time in one of my videos, you'll see a little mannequin that she uses to draw. He's sitting on the... Uh, wood burning stove back there waving his hand at the camera so she likes to leave little easter eggs like that so sometimes i have to pay close attention to what's going on the next comment comes from kaizen clay do you have to pay to be a creator now, this is in response to the video i did about local media and no you don't you don't have to pay in fact you'll make a little bit of money and i think vocal might have a premium service you don't really need to sign up for it though it's like medium will also pay you to write but you can upgrade to their gold membership plan and uh, get more out of the system. But to as a creator, to make money on either one of them, nah, you don't have to pay for it. Next comment comes from Winter Clouds. I just started working as a freelance writer for Textbroker. I got rated as a three, but in my opinion, that makes sense considering I'm not that experienced. Also, the fact that I'm just a high school student that's trying, just trying to get enough to pay for my insurance each month. Haha. <laughs> hey, I started off with uh, putting gas in my truck so I could work at the school district. But I just submitted my first five articles and I'm waiting for them to rate me again. So far, everything has been going smoothly. Well, that's good. And uh, keep in mind that when they, when you do your first five articles, it could take up to 10 days for them to um, rate your articles after that. But now that they're using Payoneer to drive all of their uh, uh, verification process, it might be sooner. So if you didn't get your initial rating after the first five articles and it hasn't been 10 days yet, I'd give it a few more just to be on the safe side. My next comment comes from JS Maxwell again. Bad things are progressing for you. The one thing that jumps out me is your comment about investing your time into medium hub pages of vocal media. Developing an audience in all three places seems fairly difficult. I'm curious, is diluting writing and potentially lowering the quality of your content something that concerns you? I know that's the primary concern that I'd have. It's a huge investment to create an audience on a single platform. Trying to do three at once seems daunting to me. I'm curious about your thoughts on it. Well, to be honest, it is kind of diluting because... Instead of being able to focus on just one system and building an audience from that, I'm spreading my, myself 
across three. So in the time that it takes me to write one article per system, I could have wrote three articles for one. And at some point, I'd probably focus on just one system, but for now, I want to find which one is the best one for me. And I'm not going to know that until I produce articles on all three systems, just to see what kind of audience I'm looking at, what kind of money comes in. Because you never should put all of your eggs in one basket. You should always be flexible and see if there's something better that's out there. Oh, will I make as much money with these systems as I do with my private clients? No. But it provides a little bit of a residual income for something I'm just going to wind up doing on my own blog anyway. But for me, it's fairly easy to crank out that much content simply because, well, I've been doing it for a long time. My goal used to be 10,000 words a day. In fact, that's one of the things that one of my writers points out is he doesn't know how I'm able to crank out so much content across three different blogs and then write for um, my client at the same time back when I was writing for him and consistently keep everything up high quality. Like, well, that's because I'm good at what I do. I type fast. I'm a good researcher. And I've created steps and strategies along the way that help streamline my time. So I'm not wasting any time when I'm doing content for clients so I can crank out stuff really fast. But keep in mind, it took me more than five years to get to that point. That's not something I did overnight, and it's still something I'm working on. I'm always working on ways to improve my efficiency. The next comment comes from Rebecca Craig. Your vids are really great. If you don't know about Pinterest marketing and making pins... And if you can find the time to market on there, you'll make a lot of money with how much content you already have. I make over 5K a month from Pinterest. I think you would do very well at it too. Hope this piques your interest. There's been a few times where I was thinking about using Pinterest, but I don't know. Um, what I do is mostly text-based, so I don't really see how I can put images to um, what, I, what I do. I suppose I can make some memes and stuff, but I don't know. It's, it's something I'm interested in probably trying i've been doing a few images on instagram and some on twitter i don't know maybe i'll find a way to add pinterest to the mix next comment comes from shaman again hi where to make html heads if i can't enter my account on wordpress because i stopped paying for it now with wordpress.com i'm not 100 percent sure how the editor is set up but if it's anything like gutenberg and the wordpress.org um, version of wordpress then you should be able to click on the text editor that's on the top right and in the text editor, you're able to add HTML tags. But again, I'm not 100% sure how WordPress.com is set up. And that's going to be one of the things we do this year is I want to start doing um, tutorials for WordPress.com so I can learn it as well. Now, there's a few things I know how to do in it, but most of my effort is focused on self-hosting WordPress. So that's a little bit different. But yeah, in WordPress, look for the text editor option if there is one. The next comment comes from Ron Kincaid. Lots of good info in this video. This is in response to the video I did recently about installing WordPress and its essential plugins. Thank you, Ron. I try to add as much detail as I can to everything because I don't believe in just showing you how to do something. I want you to understand why it works. Because the more you know, the more successful you're going to be. And I know I'm not perfect and I'm probably going to wind up forgetting a few things, but I will try my best to give you the best quality information I possibly can. So thank you for the comment, Ron. I'll do my best. The next comment comes from Jake. Excellent and informative video. Thanks so much. I joined Textbooker about a year ago, but I have been too shy to use it and ended up finding some social media evaluation jobs. However, those have all ended and I'm back looking at Textbooker. Just hoping to build up to $20 to $30 a day with Textbooker, but I have a long way to go in terms of AP style writing, confidence, skill, and everything else. Thanks again for all your videos and tips. Much appreciated. You're very welcome, Jake. And I've been there. When I first started, I was kind of shy too. I wasn't really sure what I was doing. Never wrote anything in AP style before, but I thought, eh, what the hell. As long as you're willing to put in the time to learn AP style and do some research and fine tune your skills, you'll go pretty far. I remember back when I first started, $20 to $30 a week was all I was needing because I just needed to put gas in the car and buy cigarettes. But then I saw that there was quite a bit more potential, so I started doing more and more. And I really do know how the whole confidence thing works. In fact, I still have confidence issues today. It's just one of those things that you have to push through if you really want to be successful. But I'm glad it can help, and I hope to keep helping you in the future. The next comment comes from Chris Desitoff. Where the hell did January go? I barely sat down to start thinking about my goals, and it's already February. WTF. Oh, I know the feeling. That January just kind of blew by, didn't it? In fact, February is almost half over. I guess time flies when you're having fun. But if you haven't started doing your goals, I'd suggest you start now, because before you know it, it's going to be June. Don't waste your time. The next comment comes from the Queen Adam Show. Thank you for the reminder that sometimes you just need to get to work, whether inspired or not. I'd like to do more writing for Textbooker, but sometimes it's so hard to get motivated. So tired though I be, I am going, I'm about to get to work on this direct order and get her done. Hope the remainder of your day goes well. Well, I'm glad that I'm able to light that fire under you there. 
And yeah, there's days where I wake up where I'm like, I don't want to. Don't make me. But then I realize, uh, you know, especially in my position now, that if I don't work, nobody works. So I've got a few more responsibilities than I used to have. But uh, before, it was really hard some days. But you got to remember, as a freelancer writer, every second you're not writing content for a client is one you're not getting paid for. And that's true whether you're working for text broker, writer access, or have private clients. It's also true if you have a blog. You got to focus and put in the effort if you want to succeed, even on the days when you don't want to. But after you're able to push through all that I don't want to phase, you start feeling good about yourself. You can look back on your day and think to yourself, that was pretty good. At least that's how it is for me. Like there's a lot of days where I'm thinking it's going to go bad. But then by the time night comes around, I look back at my productivity and all the things I've accomplished for the day. And I think to myself, it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. Feeling pretty proud. I'm glad I can help you. The next comment comes from Winter Clouds again. About how long does it take for Payoneer payments to show up in your bank account? Unfortunately, I haven't done anything with Payoneer yet because I've been so busy with my private clients and trying to get everything else on my own going. But from what everything I've looked up and read, if you process your payment on a Friday, you should get it by Monday. It's like the next business day. But then again, like I said, I haven't used it, so I don't know for sure. So sorry, I couldn't be much help on this one. But after all the things I've read, I even did some research on this one. And it looks like everybody gets their payments roughly about the same time. So like on um, the next day. The next comment comes from Blair Groove. Hello, Writer Sanctuary. What tips are there to write a good product description? With a product description, essentially you want to put yourself in the position of the company. You're trying to sell something for somebody. And so you want to use a lot of superlatives and put in as much detail about the product as possible. Now, the problem is that sometimes clients differ. You'll have some clients that want 150 words for a product description. Then you have some that want like a miniature blog at 300. So a lot of times it's going to depend on the client that you're working for, what the product is, and how much detail you can add to the piece. If you have time, I'd suggest taking a look at some of the product descriptions that are in places like Amazon, because some of the descriptions in there are pretty good. So it's a good place to start and base your own ideas on how you can flow with it. I found that adding a little bit of personality to it and having some fun with it and uh, making the person who's rating it feel good about the product. So I hope I can help you with that one. And the last comment today comes from Shyman again. Hi, Michael. I want to write short stories. Where, from your point of view, is it better, is it better to sell them or at least if they will not be bought to store them for better times when I will improve them and that no one will steal my ideas till that time? Yes, I have a good editor. Now, personally, I like putting my creative pieces on Wattpad. I use Wattpad as a way to hammer out the rough draft and then when I'm ready to publish it, I'm going to go through and sparkle it all up and then publish that version. So the Wattpad version will be the rough draft. So no matter what, no one's going to read the same story from Wattpad to my published novel. And I know some authors who got picked up from Wattpad who pulled off their stories from Wattpad to publish them with their publishing house, but left the first like two or three chapters there as a taste of what the book is and then with a link to buy the book. So that's something you can consider. Now, I know there's a lot more places than Wattpad. In fact, my son writes for, I think it's fanfiction.net or something like that. But this is a very interesting topic, and I'm going to do a video about it soon in the near future about the different places where you can go to write. So I can know you can be creative on vocal media and medium. In fact, both of those platforms have areas specifically for being creative. Now, you probably won't make bank on those sites, but it's a good place to uh, flex your writing muscles and at least get something in for being creative. I've been a fan of Wattpad for quite some time, so that's one of the reasons why I use it. So that's it for the comments today. If you need help with anything, you can always leave it in the comments down below or on any video that I have out there on my library. And you can always send questions on social media or use the contact form on RiseSanctuary.com's website. I did do some work on 7 this week and I'm pretty excited for it. I've been going through and revamping some of the last story for 7 and getting some different ideas and working on it. It's uh, really cool to get back into being creative again. I think the schedule that I have set up is uh, working pretty good for me. I may be able to put some effort into 7, get some blogging done, and then work for my clients right after. So as long as I can maintain my schedule, I think it'll be uh, published before the end of the month. Knock on wood. I know I've said that before. And lastly, I'm trying to get more videos out. This week kind of sucked because I've been like stupid busy. For like the third week in a row. And for the most part, it's coming down to time management skills and not from the same thing I was suffering from last year. This time around, it's that some projects are taking way longer than I thought they would. But I think I have a handle on everything so far. And I want to start delegating some of my workload to the people who are going to help me. So I do have a couple of new writers who will be helping me with uh, the different blog posts that I produce. Namely, it's my friend and my son. 
If you can't hire a professional writer, sometimes it's good to go with cheap labor. And in this case, I'm giving my son a place to live and my friend just wants to help. But in either case, with both of them working on blog posts, I don't have to worry about it. And I'm able to focus more on doing other things. Which is great, because uh, a lot of times when I'm trying to do a blog post, that's what takes the time away from making a video. So if somebody can take that over for me, then uh, I can probably get some more work done. And get some more videos out in front of you guys. So let's cross our fingers and hope that works. So anyway, I need to get back to work. So if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this or covering WordPress, freelance writing, textbook, or anything else I cover, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. That's going to do it for me today. Have a safe weekend. I'll see you next week.